Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. ESCOM reported interim results this week following the release of a damning report on state capture by the public protector. Terence Creamer joins me now to discuss how it went. Welcome, Terence. Awesome. Uh, the results were overshadowed, it seems, by the public protector's report, Tulima Dunsela's state capture report. That's correct. Uh, a lot of the uh, presentation was dedicated to um, this report and uh, Brian Malefe's own personal response to that report. He felt he wasn't given an opportunity to give his version of events. And as you say, the, the report is quite damning ar around uh, the Eskom's role in firstly, uh, I suppose, uh, ensuring that I uh, Glencore uh, relinquished the asset and secondly, ensuring that Tegeta, which is linked to the Gupta family, was able to pay for that asset. And I think the main point that uh, uh, Brian Malefi was trying to make is that they were ready to, uh, they were, had been subpoenaed, and, but they had never got an opportunity to sit across from Tuli Madansela and give their version of events. But I think what Tuli Madansela has done is she has, has made no findings, uh, but has rather set up a process in the form of a commission of inquiry which um, President Zuma, she says, must uh, uh, establish using a name of a judge given to him by Mahueng Mahueng, the Chief Justice, so that we can establish um, s sort of the, the truth around uh, what is really a lot of allegations and a lot of uh, innuendo and uh, s suggestion. And, but there's definitely some sort of close proximity between some of the Iskim uh, individuals, such as Brahma Lefe, it seems, and so the Gupta family, and uh, that needs exposure through this this um, this commission of inquiry. However, they still feel that they've been tarred as a, a, you know as corrupt individuals, and that this is going to linger uh, around them for some time. And they felt they, they they should have had a hearing. And what of the results themselves? Well, the results were actually pretty good. I think uh, the the headline is that. Um, uh, other than the financials, the operational performance continues to improve. So we've got a much higher energy availability factor. And amid very weak economic growth and um, in falling demand from key sectors, especially industry, it means that Eskom sitting with uh, a surplus uh, capacity. They have found some home for that surplus in the region, so there's been a big surge in cross-border sales. But I think the big appeal <laughs> that Eskom made a very ironic appeal is that they want uh, energy intensive users to come back and engage with them to, to use their product. They've got too much of the product and they need to sell it. And uh, you know, if we think back as South Africans a few years, starting in 2008 when we first heard the word load shedding, but then when it intensified over the last few years, you know, load shedding really, uh, who got leaned on most heavily were those energy intensive users. And it wasn't, they weren't only leaned on to cut back um, on their uh, on their demand and their consumption by 10 percent but they were also leaned on very heavily through the way the tariffs increased and so those uh, those businesses some of them weren't able to sustain that and, and have closed and that's why we're seeing much lower industrial demand um, and others are would, i suppose would need to be wait for a different environment in the sort of commodity cycle to return uh, and switch back on some of that capacity so I think it's, uh, it's a difficult, uh, and in, uh, in addition, there's also been moves by a lot of those who have the wherewithal to put in own generation. So it's going to be quite difficult to restore that uh, industrial demand uh, unless we see a real big change in, in the commodity outlook, which I think we're seeing the bottoming, but are we seeing a, a turn? And will our electricity prices be competitive enough for some of these, uh, these, these foundries and smelters to return, I think is the big question. But I think Eskom is saying is that there's going to be uh, this uh, surplus, um, growing surplus until 2022, and then a narrowing surplus post then until 2026, is, which is when they suggest that we need new capacity. And in their view, it should be nuclear. In other people's views, it should be um, other uh, more flexible options of uh, sort of led by renewables such as wind and solar and backed up by, by gas or other technologies that are able to respond to the demand profile that is created or, uh, or the supply variability that, that, that is associated with wind and solar. So, but I think that's, the, 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 on, the, on, on the whole, the results showed both operationally and financially amid the storm that uh, surrounds Eskom around um, you know, the, the governance. 
uh, there, is, there are some signs of improvement. In terms of renewable energy, did any clarity emerge with the ongoing standoff with the renewables IPP? Sadly, there too. I think uh, I think there was some hope that you know after the medium-term budget policy statement, where the finance minister made quite clear that we, we need to move ahead, and this is a, a valuable program for South Africa. Yes, we've had to pay a lot of school fees in the first few rounds. So. Those first few rounds uh, of wind and solar are expensive, and ESCO made a big, uh, uh, you know, show of that, uh, showing how it's costing them two rand eighteen cents per kilowatt hour to buy these renewables, and showing that traje the the trajectory is not going to fall massively by 2022. It's still going to be at two rand seven cents, despite the falling prices in the later rounds, and they really it's still asking the question as to whether South Africa can afford it. They feel that um, the pace and scale, <laughs> to borrow the phrase from the nuclear, uh, nuclear environment, is too rapid in terms of the build-up of renewables, and that they would therefore like a halt to this, or a, slow, a major slowdown. So there was no real indication that they had moved um, and were ready to start signing power purchase agreements again. What we did get from uh, the embattled CEO, Brian Molefe, was uh, a suggestion that government has set up a, an, a, a group involving the Energy Minister, the Public Enterprises Minister, and the Environmental Affairs Minister to engage with ESCOM around this issue to try to find some sort of solution. But no, we didn't get any uh, f firm decisions and any firm commitments to start signing again, which leaves quite a few projects uh, sort of in limbo at the moment. We still have projects from round 3.5 that haven't been signed. Those have been um, you know, approved by government. And then we've got a whole lot from the bit, bit window 4 onwards um, and what is also this, this expedited round. So there's a view that there's something like 30 projects that are sitting you know, in a delayed sort of uh, holding pattern. So we need some certainty around that. And it was disappointing that there is still doesn't seem to be this alignment between ESCOM and the policy makers around renewables and around RPPs. Although Brian Malefi said he's quite happy to sign up coal and gas RPPs, saying that those do meet their requirement and do meet their um, the technical requirement of being able to supply during the peak. So uh, it was a bit of a mixed picture there. But again, this very heavy emphasis on nuclear and needing to start planning for nuclear, with Brian Malef is saying they only want to go ahead with nuclear at a, once they've got to design freeze, because that's, that's what they did not do with Madupi and Kosida, which led to all the, the difficulties and the cost overruns and delays. And he says they need five years at least to do that planning and that we need to make the decisions soon so that they can start moving ahead with that planning phase. We did see the cabinet announcement uh, on the same day as Eskom's results, which confirmed what was already in the public domain, that Eskom would be uh, not only the owner operator of the uh, new nuclear power plants, but would also be the, the, the procuring, uh, uh, you know, they'd be responsible for the procurement of that. So that, that is a big shift from um, the previous situation where Eskom said our balance sheet cannot bear this and therefore it was shifted across the Department of Energy and the South Africa, well, NEXA, the South African Nuclear Energy Corporation. Now the power plant component of the nuclear build is back with ESCOM. And they also said, the cabinet also announced that the non-power plant co component of the nuclear build, that's the multi-purpose reactor and the fuel cycle, will remain with NEXA and with DOE playing an oversight and coordinating role. So there seems to be some movement there, but still this is happening in the absence of an updated integrated resource plan, which many people feel that should be fi finalized, not just we, we moving into a cons public consultation phase around what they say, the base case and the assumptions. So that's good. That's again a cabinet announcement. But I think people feel there should be a finalized integrated resource plan before we move into a request for proposals for nuclear. I think Eskom has a different view that we need to start moving sooner than the integrated resource plan. And the speculation, I suppose, is that if they, uh, uh, you know, they, if they don't, that might be um, pushed aside in the integrated resource plan. It might not actually pass muster, uh, given what's happening in other parts of the technologies that are in the mix with the falling prices of solar and wind, and with um, gas coming as a backup to that, that the nuclear might be pushed quite far out. I think already it will be shown in the base case to be much deeper than the 2030 type horizon, or 2023 to 2030 horizon. In the 2010 version, we're talking about deep into the 2030s. 
but I think uh, Eskom wants to get moving on this so that it's not pushed out even further. Thank you, Terence. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.